raining outside. This is this is a really nice weather to sit inside and do a video. Hello, functioneers! A couple of weeks back, I made a video about how to get your team to do unit testing. In one part of that video, I talk about how to do mocking. And in today's video, I would like to show you some more down-to-earth examples showing how I do mocking. The title of this video says that it is the best way to do mocking, but that is really a lie. This is just how I do mocking, but I've had a lot of success with it. You will basically have to judge for yourself if you think this is a good idea or if you're wrong. Just to have some sample code, I created an app to kill the lights in this room. So I have a bunch of Philips Hue lights in my home where you can you can control them via, via app, it's pretty cool. Hue also has an API which we're gonna use today to demonstrate some unit testing and mocking. You see, I have this, these big ass white lights uh, in my face when I'm recording. And when I, uh, when I am recording, I want to turn the U lights off to make the lighting completely predictable so it doesn't switch around. So today I have created a little command line utility to do that quickly. And this is how it works. I just write kill lights. It says not authenticated, please press the button on your bridge and run this script again. So I will have to go over and press the button on the U bridge to prove that I have physical access to the bridge. Done! Now I just write kill lights again. And now it's authenticated. And now observe the lamp back. That is the entirety of the software. So this little API interacts with three things. First, the Hue API, of course. With the Hue API, it creates a Hue username, which it saves on the file system. It also writes out what it does to the console. We're going to refer to the code that does all these things as core, and core is what we're testing. Core is the unit in our unit test. The console, Hue API and file system is not what we are writing tests for. We're assuming that they work. We're collectively gonna refer to the services that are around the core that we're not testing as the shell. So let's have a little look at this little project. I've put it up on GitHub, you can find the link in the show description. Before we start, please note that this is not a tutorial, this is a sketch to communicate an idea. So don't get caught up in the details, instead just try to focus on the general idea. So we have a couple of files here. We have test.js, which is our unit tests. We're gonna look at those in just a bit. And we also see core and shell here. Let's have a look at the core first. The first thing that you'll notice here is that there are no require statements on top. Instead, all the things that the core needs from the outside, the Hue API, the file system, console, are injected here in services. Services are the stuff that lives outside of core, in the shell. If you look here on line 3, you see that we're reading from a file. This is just a normal fs.read file, but instead of being required, it is being injected as a property on the services object. And that's a general idea, the rest of the code in this file is not really important. So let's have a look where the service object is created, the shell. So this is a shell. What we see here is uh, the core being required, and then we see the FS and uh, node Hue API and console just being set as properties here on the services object. And the services object is just being set here as an argument to the core. In a real uh, non-example app, we would probably have real arguments here being passed on to the core, but uh, you will just have to imagine that. And just quickly, just to give you a sense of the entire application, this is CLI.js, which is basically the runner of the app, the thing that runs when you enter the kill, uh, kill lights command, and it just requires shell and calls it. That's it. Of course, we do all this in order to make it easy to mock out all the services in the shell. Let's take a look at test.js. First of all, we require tape for the test. If you haven't seen tape before, it's just like, it's a test runner like Mocha. 
only simpler. We require Sinon.js. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a mocking library. We basically use it to uh, make fake functions that return fake values easier. And we require core. Remember, core is the unit that we are testing in our unit tests. We don't really care about the services in the shell, that's somebody else's problem. We care about how core interacts with those services, and that is what we're testing. Let's walk through the first test. Here, on line 37, we are making the actual call to core, and we are passing in the services as the service object, which we're creating here on line 31. We have a helper for this because we do it in every test, so let's have a look at that and create service stubs over here. Create service stubs just makes an object that contains mock versions of the services in the shell, which Sinon stubs instead of the real implementations here. Notice here that we are only mocking the things that we know are needed in the tests. The real FS library in Node has way more methods than this, but we only care about these two because those are the only ones being used by our code. So there is absolutely no need to make a generic mock version of your objects. Uh, mocking, it's, it's time consuming and hard, so you should do it as little as possible. So let's go back down to the test a bit. If you look here on line 35, this is where we intercept the, uh, the read file call. Let me split that into two lines for you. Here, when core tries to read the username stored on the file system, it will get an error here. And then we verify down here on line 41 that core handles this error correctly and responds to it by calling register user on the API. And that's it, that's the pattern. You separate your code into two parts, the core, that is your unit that you're testing, the logic that is dependency free, and then you have your shell, which is all the dependencies with side effects and stuff, and you inject that in. That way you can, in your unit test, inject a completely fake shell, and then inspect the shell if the core called it correctly. Every app is different, and I tend to write different tests in every app I write, but I tend to always come back to these core and shell semantics. I guess it's because it's really easy to reason about, and it doesn't have any weird magic, it's just objects. There are test frameworks that mock require statements and stuff like that, but that's a lot of magic, and I don't know, I always get into trouble when I use magic when programming. I like the simple core shell semantics. Core is the unit that is being tested, and you're testing that it interacts correctly with the shell. This whole thing, as usual, is inspired by somebody a lot smarter than me, Gary Bernhardt and his talk Boundaries. Also linked below, it's pretty great. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function, a weekly show where we try to become more excited and confident about programming by exploring old wisdom, wild ideas, and having fun. Do not miss out on the next episode! Subscribe! Until next Monday, stay curious.